Hello, it's been a while since I done, uh, did a video. Uh, holidays and life and everything just kind of got crazy there for a while. But I wanted to really try to dig back into and maybe go deeper uh, into this idea of mindset and how it plays into our relationships uh, as with people, uh, whether it's our personal life or at work. Um, it, it all kind of comes into this idea that everything... I mean, we are social beings, and especially as police officers, everything we do involves other people. And a, a, a lot of the things that I'm talking about here come from uh, an idea called the outward mindset, which is really kind of presented by a company called the Arbinger Group, and they have a series of books. Uh, but the one that I super recommend for police officers uh, is this one called The Anatomy of Peace. I mean, I recommend all their books. They have three. Uh, but I feel like this one, The Anatomy of Peace, deals more like with just some, I mean, serious people kind of problems. Problems in families, problems among nations, uh, things like that, that as police officers, that's exactly what we deal with uh, day in, day out, are some of these, you know, serious interpersonal conflicts among people. And the the way that this book talks about mindset we've talked about the two mindsets uh, an inward mindset or an outward mindset of how we see other people and the outward mindset of seeing people as people uh, or the inward mindset of seeing people as objects the anatomy of peace uh, defines it a little bit differently and gives it something more for that works for me or that i really i guess have come to internalize um and how i how i work with it and that's it the anatomy of peace defines an outward mindset as being having a heart at peace. And if you think about, I mean, that's what I think most of us, that's what we are looking for is a heart at peace. And we have all these other ambitions in life, but that inner peace, that's, that's priceless. You can't put a price on that. And I think as humans, one, one of the things that we are looking for most of all is to have that inner peace. Now we go about it in a million different ways, and a lot of the ways we go about it obviously don't work. Uh, but anyway, I'm kind of rambling here. Sorry about that. But so it goes back to this idea of, of a heart at peace. And is your heart at peace, or is your heart at war, or is your heart at conflict? And and kind of where are you at in that? Um, and it comes up to this so this idea of if we have a, the outward mindset and we're seeing people as people or and we're attempting to have a heart at peace how do we actually do that and that's what I want to kind of uh, jump into here in this video and if you so if we are seeing people as people and we see their needs objectives and challenges then in what are those needs what are and you know are and are we cognizant of those needs in our interaction with people. And I think if we really break this down, people have the need to be seen, heard, and understood. Uh, if you think about it yourself in, in times that, that you have felt that you haven't been seen, or you haven't been heard, or you're misunderstood, and how does that make you feel? And you know, if you think about it, being misunderstood is like one of the worst things that can happen to you. It's like being it's almost like it's being accused of something that, that you didn't do. And so being misunderstood, it's, it's a terrible experience for anybody. Uh, being overlooked, uh, not heard, not listened to, just blown off. Not, no human being likes that. And in fact, we all uh, respond to that in the same way. But when, when we experience that, when we experience not being seen, not being heard, or being misunderstood, not understood, Basically, the message that's coming to us is we don't matter. Or if we are communicating to someone in a way or behaving uh, to them in a way, basically we're that we don't see them, we don't hear them, we don't understand them, or I'm not going to take the time to understand you, or I'm not going to take the time to hear you, the message that we are sending to them is they don't matter. And... And I think, like I said, we, we've all experienced that. And so we know what that's like. And, but yet we do that to people 
all the time. And none of us like it. it it's, it's a universal human trait. I mean, those are, those are our human needs. They're built into us. And when we're treated in a way that kind of goes against that, then <clears throat> we feel like we don't matter. And none of us like that either. So when we communicate or behave or otherwise, you know, somehow send the message to somebody that they don't matter, it violates their human dignity. And if you think about the word violate and the word violence, there, there's a similarity there. And I actually looked this up because, uh, I, I mean, it's not like I just know this stuff off my head, but I actually researched the, the two words and the word violence and the word violate come back to the same Latin root, meaning to treat with violence. So if we present, a, when, a, when a human being is presented with an act of physical violence, they'll respond in one of three ways. And that's fight, flight, or freeze. So, and I think, you know, those are things that most of us have heard of. Uh, they're either going to fight back, uh, they're going to run away, or they, they just freeze up during the headlights. Well, and, and so, and that's, that's a physical response that you get. Well, when we violate someone's human dignity by communicating or acting in a way that, that they're not, that they don't matter, it produces in them the same emotional response. It creates an emotional fight, flight, or freeze response, emotionally, not physically, because it was, it was basically an emotional, mental violation of their human dignity, but they respond in the same way. They become defensive and they argue and fight back. And not physically when I say that. I mean, it's that, it's that defensive and I need to defend myself and I need to argue my point of view and I need to let you know that you can't treat me that way. So it's more of a mental, emotional response. Or they, they emotionally just flee from it. They, they just try to distance themselves emotionally they, I mean, if it's like in a meeting or something like that where they can't physically leave, they just tune out. And that kind of gets into that freeze so they, they just shut down. I, I think we've probably all experienced and as police officers, we've seen that in people. Uh, the, the people that just argue back and or the people that just kind of tune us out or the people that just shut down. They just clam up and they, they're just completely shut down. So as, as people and as police officers involved in, in daily conflict, we have to be super aware of, are we treating people in a way that they don't, or that they perceive they don't matter? Are we not seeing them, not hearing them, not understanding them? Because when we do that, it produces an emotional fight, flight, or, resp or freeze response in them. And so in a way, now we have become part of the problem. And then we're going to get that response, which doesn't help us in our call. It doesn't help us resolve the conflict. Um, and honestly, sometimes maybe we're looking for that. You know, we want that fight. Hey, yeah, come on, let's fight. You know, um, let, let's argue. Let me beat it into you and, and prove that I'm right and you're wrong. Um, you know, I won't say that I've, not, I've never been there. I have. Um, and this, it's not, what we're talking about here isn't really easy. And in fact, it's not even the natural human response. The natural human response is that more like that, you know, that, that um, just let, let's fight it out. And, you know, the, whoever, whoever's strongest or smartest or whatever will win. But that was the point I really want to drive home is, we have to be careful because we are producing emotional, mental responses in people by the way that we treat them. And when we violate someone's human dignity by indicating, communicating, treating them in a way that they don't matter, then we're producing that emotional fight, flight, or freeze response. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, what if I don't agree with them? What if they are wrong? Well, here's the thing. Somebody, we can still treat somebody. I can still see somebody, hear somebody, and understand somebody and not agree with them. I can still understand somebody and hear them, see them, and still arrest them. Uh, that doesn't change anything. 
it's, and I, I think if you think about this in your own experience, and this is the interesting thing about humans, is that inside we're all the same. And so if we will take the time to think about how do I feel when I'm treated that way, well, guess what? It's the same thing for that other person. They feel the same way. Now, I know we've all had times where we felt like we don't matter, but I'm sure that we've all had times, or I, I hope that you've been around people who are decent enough to, to see you, to hear you, to understand what you're saying, and then say, well, that's not what we're going to do because of this, this, and this. And then you go away from that encounter of like, you might be disappointed, you might be let down, maybe it's something that meant a lot to you, but you felt seen, heard, and understood. They just went a different way. They just made a different decision. And it's a whole different experience. You, you, like I said, you might be disappointed, you might be let down, but it's not like an emotional attack on you. You don't feel this need to argue back. You don't shut down to them. And you don't feel like you just need to get away from, from these people. And that is, to me, as, as human beings, that's what we have to be aware of is what type of emotional responses are we creating in people? We can still see them, hear them, and understand them and still not do what they want us to do. Uh, still not agree with them. Uh, still tell them, and believe in our hearts that they are wrong in their behaviors uh, or that their perception of the conflict or what's going on is wrong or their response to it is wrong or their response or their behavior is against the law and they're going to be arrested for it. But I can still do that in a way that I see them, I hear them, and I understand them. And it will have a, the, the more we can do this, it will have a dramatic change on the outcomes of those encounters and most importantly on the state of our own heart and and i tell you from my personal experience that this idea of having a heart at peace is what i was seeking for for years uh, because my heart was not at peace and in fact it was becoming more and more angry and to the point that i was at that that I was so angry, there's times that I almost couldn't control it. And I felt like I'm, I'm gonna snap, I'm gonna like blow up. And I didn't know what to do about it. And I, and I can't remember if I've talked about this in other videos or not, but, but these books and this principle of the outward mindset is what changed that. And it's not that I'm perfect at it every day, but the more I try to implement and live that way, my heart is at peace. And to me, that's the most important thing um, is that, that, that I live at peace and, and that my heart's at peace, even though I'm involved in conflict every day. Some of it is violent. And, but I can be involved in that and live that life um, and still have a heart at peace. And the, uh, the anatomy of peace explains it much better than I do here. Uh, so I highly recommend that you read that book and and consider how you are treating people and are you becoming part of the problem by not seeing them hearing them or understanding them now this did i'm going to do another uh quick video that is like part two to this that talks about well what do we do when people you know violate our human dignity how do we respond to that and so that we can still have uh, have a heart at peace but anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, I, I really hope, and my whole purpose in doing this is to help other people live with a heart at peace. Um, yeah, it, it's great for our communities. It's great for our families and things like that. But ultimately, what it does for us as individuals is kind of what drives me to, to share this and to spread this message to as, as many people as I possibly can. And because ultimately I believe all human beings, what we're looking for most of all, even more than money and all these things that we spend our time chasing is what we're looking for is that heart at peace. And these are the principles that, that lead us to living in a way that, that our hearts are at peace.